Good evening. My name is Janice Fleming, and I am the president of the League of Women Voters of Plainfield. On behalf of the League, I am pleased to welcome you to this Board of Education Candidate Forum. The League's partners in presenting this forum are Tap into Plainfield, represented by Jennifer Popper, and the media sponsor, Reporte Hispano. We appreciate their nonpartisan participation and support. The League of Women Voters is a trusted membership organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. The League never supports or opposes candidates for office or political parties. Any use of the League name or footage from the forum and campaign materials, literature, or advertising of any kind, including internet, cable, or television, has not been authorized by the League of Women Voters and is not permitted. The moderator for this forum is Ann D. Armstrong of the Somerset Hunterton County's League of Women Voters. Ann joined the League in 1984 and served as co-president and voter chair for the Raritan Valley League prior to its extinction, ex <clears throat> extinction, excuse me. She trained as a League of Women Voters moderator in 1982 and has served as a moderator for congressional, county, township council and board of education candidate events. From 2011 to 2013, Anne held positions as treasurer and budget chair of the League of Women Voters New Jersey State Board. She has been an ardent supporter of the League of Women Voters New Jersey Vote 411 since the program originated. In 2019, Anne received the New Jersey League's Distinguished Service Award. We are grateful that she is moderating this event Anne. Thank you, Janice. Welcome. We have with us today six candidates vying for three seats on the Plainfield Board of Education. Before introducing the candidates, I'd like to explain the format. Each candidate will give a brief opening statement. After the opening statements, the candidates will be asked previously submitted questions in rotating order. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer each question and each question will be will be given a each candidate will be given a set time to answer each question. After the question and answer period, the candidates will each give a brief closing statement. The candidates for the Plainfield Board of Education are Marquette Henderson Harris, Monique Joshua Cunningham, Alan D. Lilly. Sarah Virgo, Victor Webb, and Hannah Hane Wyatt. We will begin with the opening statement of Marquette Henderson Harris. Good evening. My name is Marquette Harris, and I want to thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum. I've lived in Plainfield for over 40 years. My husband and I wanted to raise our children in a community in which they would thrive. Our children are products of the Plainfield School District, and I'm proud of their achievements. I'm a grandmother of six and a retired child welfare administrator. I spent my career advocating for the safety and well being of children and family. During my career, I was involved in implementing systemic changes that reform child welfare in New York. It is my love for this city and my commitment to service that led me to run for a seat on Plainfield's Board of Education. Plainfield has experienced tremendous growth and our success as a city is tied to our educational system. A top priority of our team is the completion of a strategic plan. This process means involving all members of the community, students, teachers, and staff in identifying the priorities and needs of our student body as well as establishing the goals for the district. It is our roadmap to success. So I ask you 
on November 2nd that you vote for column two, Cunningham, Lily, and Harris. We are aiming higher together. Thank you. Thank you. Next, the opening statement of Monique Joshua Cunningham. Hi, my name is Monique Joshua Cunningham. Um, be because of my passion for education, I have decided to run for the board. I have been a um, resident in Plainfield for the past 18 years. Um, I have been involved in education for over 30 something years, and I have seen the need for a better education. And so I dedicate myself for aiming higher for a better edu education for Plainfield, and I will do whatever it takes to be a part of the team. I ask you vote for, for the three Board of Education candidates, Cunningham, Lily, and Marquette. On that day, again, I thank you for voting for us. Okay, thank you very much. Next, again, the opening statements of Alan D. Lilly. Good evening, and thank you for the for the opportunity for the Women's Voters for tapping the playing field. So, as you heard, Val, I'm Alan D. Lilly, and born and raised in Plainfield, a product of Plainfield, married two children in Plainfield school system. Um, I've always looked forward to being great at something, and here's my chance to give back to our community we came from, where I grew up at. So I know that we can make a, a, a huge difference in what and how our children turn out to be in the future. That's our goal. So 20 years of working for a defense contractor, and I've learned how to humble myself, become humble and learn from others who came before me. So the prior administrations and board members, they did what they could, but it's time for a new day for us to take the reins and lead our kids to the next level. We have lots of diversity in playing field, which we are ready to address. Lots of issues in the school system, which we want to assist with. But let's be honest, our goal is to only assist the school to run properly. We don't run the school. So please join us in my candidates for column two, Cunningham, Harris, and Lily. And we'll see you on November 2nd. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Next, the opening statement of Sarah Virgo. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Virgo. First, I'd like to thank Rita Davis and the members of the League of Women Voters for inviting me to participate this evening and for hosting such an important event. Um, I'm a, a proud resident of the Queen City, a uh, wife, healthcare professional, community activist, a mom of two school age children, Jack and Veda, ages 13 and three, and a candidate for the Plainfield Board of Education in column one, along with Henny Wyatt and Victor Webb. Um, I graduated with honors from public high school in the South and then went on to attend John Jay College and St. John's University. I have worked at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center for the last 15 years. And during my time there, I've advocated for patient equity in underserved communities and to really improve the quality of care for millions. Um, I've also been really privileged to establish and serve on a variety of boards dedicated to guaranteeing inclusion amongst employees. Um, in 2017, I established the MSCOPE program, which provides students in underfunded school districts with the unique opportunity to learn laboratory sciences um, and pursue careers. And in addition to my advocacy work at MSK, um, philanthropy has been a primary focus in both my professional and my personal life. In, 20, in 2009, I launched the Outreach Foundation in honor of my late mother, and in doing so, established six scholarships annually for high school students pursuing degrees in STEM. Um, I believe that Plainfield deserves a guaranteed path to success for students, equity and equal opportunity for all, representation and engagement for our Plainfield families, data-driven decisions for students, and support for educators and staff. I believe serving on the board offers one of the most meaningful ways to contribute to the strength and success of our city. 
and I understand the direct connection between education and the vitality of our community. So I look forward to this evening's exchange and I am once again grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. The next, the opening statement of Victor Webb. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum and inviting me. Um, thank you to all the residents of Plainfoot who've tuned in. My name is Victor Webb, as, as stated, I'm a proud Plainfoot resident. I've been serving the community for well over 34 years. I, I'm very proud of my service to the community. There's nothing um, that I haven't done in the community that I can think of from working for multiple administrations um, and supporting every mayor that's come to town since I've been about 15 or 16. Um, I also attended uh, Kane University or Kane College at the time uh, where uh, I joined an AmeriCorps program that was allowed me to continue my service uh, in my hometown uh, where I started the National School and Community Corps that allowed me to partner with elementary school students and provide support directly in the classroom. Um, if anyone knows about when Washington Community School opened in 2000, they partnered with the Safe Haven After School Program that connected me to so many young people in the community, youth, people that have gone on to raise their family. Um, they were elementary school students at the time, but they've grown up to now raise their families and kids attend uh, the public schools now. So um, I feel I'm very well connected and committed to the community. Um, after the AmeriCorps program, the National School and Community Corps, I went to work for the American Red Cross uh, that used to be on West Front Street. And I was the acting disaster director and the director of youth and volunteer services, uh, where I wrote a grant uh, for Hubbard Middle School students to do a babysitter's program. Uh, little did I know at that time, it inspired some of those students to go into the field of early childhood ed education. And a few of those students are teachers uh, in the public school system in Plainfield to this day. I'm very proud of that. I look forward to serving the community. I will take this duty very seriously. And I'm asking that you pro provide your vote to column one on November 2nd for Hane Wyatt, Sarah Virgo, and myself, Victor Webb. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Last but not least, we have the opening statement of Hane Wyatt. Hello, everyone. My name is Hane Wyatt. I am a candidate for Plainfield Board of Education, of course, on column one with the Empowerment Through Education team with Sarah Virgo and Victor Webb. I'm a wife, a mom of three beautiful children. I was raised here in Plainfield, New Jersey. I did matriculate through the Plainfield public school system. After college, I decided to return back to Plainfield in 2009, where I got my first job with the City of Plainfield and Plainfield Action Services. Since then, I remained with the City of Plainfield in multiple departments, um, next being the Division of Parks and Recreation, and then the department that I have most recently worked with, but I'm currently not working with, is the Division of Inspections. I did move on, but during my time with the City of Plainfield, I was able to provide a public service in a different way. However, for the majority of my life, um, even prior to college, I've dedicated my time to giving of oneself to others. So I provide service to my community and, it's, and especially the youth, which is what I have a deep passion for in hopes that I can help move my community forward as well as make a difference in the lives of the youth in our communities who may or may not be at a disadvantage. I am. Um, I helped my husband start a nonprofit organization, Gentlemen Making Changes. Through that organization, we service the youth and the community through various programs and events and activities throughout the year um, annually so that we can continue to be involved, help expose them to different um, things outside of Plainfield and outside of the norm of which they would normally um, participate. We wanna make sure that we uplift our community and our youth so that um, they can be the best version of themselves. So I'm running for school board because I wanna be a part of the decision-making process to help make decisions in the best interest of the district in its entirety and ultimately our youth. So again, I'm just wanna say thank you guys for having me on this forum, the candidates forum, and I look forward to our discussion today. Thank you. It is now time for the questions that were submitted online. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer each question. The first question is what programs and academic issues does Plainfield School District need to address or change? Sarah Virgo, we're starting with you. If need be, I can repeat the question. That would be great, thank you. 
What programs and academic issues does Plainfield School District need to address or change? Thank you. That's a great question, actually. I think um, primarily what we need to address first is the graduation rate at the high school level. So currently across the state, most of the state of New Jersey, it's 90% for graduation. Here in Plainfield, it's about 72%. And to me, that's that's an incredible disadvantage that we're, we're you know, promoting success for our students, but we can't, we're only graduating 75, less than 75%. I think that needs to be a major focus initially. Um, I also think that we really have to focus on guaranteeing pathways to success for all students. So college is wonderful for some and about 25% of our high school graduates here go on to pursue college, but college is not for everyone. So I think that we have to do a better job of establishing programs and pathways to success and in addition, making sure that we're addressing the gaps in the academics that currently exist, whether it's vocational training, a gifted and talented, and so on. Um, we just have to really take a step back and look at where the gaps are and address those immediately. Thank you. Next is Hane Wyatt. Yes, hello. So I believe that Plainfield needs programs that are going to speak to what our children are interested in. We need to meet our children where they are and we need to provide the programs that are gonna help move them forward, that are gonna help advance them to the next level. So in elementary schools, we need to bring back the gifted and talented program. We need to bring back, mimic the programs that we currently have in our middle schools and our high schools at that level, because that's where you need to start with the students. We need to bring back the trade programs for the uh, youth at the high school and to start them at the middle school level because we need to put our children on a path to success. Just like Sarah said, we need to make sure that the trajectory moving forward with what the kids are trying to do starts at the lower level so that they grow within the program and that once they're in high school, that now they can catapult themselves into the work industry, the workforce, so that they're successful. So I just feel like there were a lot of programs when I was young that were in, implemented like Gifted and Talented and the debate team. So I feel like those are the type of programs we need to be back, bring back, speak to the youth about it. Thank you. Next, Victor Webb. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. <clears throat> what programs and academic issues does Plainfield School District need to address or change? Um, I'd actually like to take a look at, closer look at some of the numbers um, just to see where the academics are really struggling. I know there's been a change in demographic over time and there are multiple schools that uh, we have to measure, but uh, just an emphasis on supporting youth where they are, if there are any supports that are needed through an IEP or any uh, learning um, supports, I'd like to make sure that they are getting all the help that they need. Uh, as far as programs, I'd like to see a volunteer program uh, initiated at least on the high school level, which encourages high school students to perform at least 120 hours of volunteer service in order to graduate. I think having access or exposure to the community and through the form of service uh, can can institute something called service learning, which will encourage people and young people and build confidence in them. And once you have someone that's building confidence, they, it's much easier for them to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Monique Joshua Cunningham. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. What programs or academic issues does Plainfield School District need to address or change? Um, there is a gap in the Plainfield School system, and that gap begins in early childhood. And I believe if we can have a systematic plan in order to bridge that gap, we will be able to have a better plan in place for our students in the Plainfield City. This can also be done with um, social programs to build up their social skills, because that is important. And um, a plan, a strategic plan for teachers who is able to deal with the emotions of our children with this plan in place social emotional fill in the gap that's there by um the students going off to college does not have a good test scores that will help to build our system 
of a higher education in Clayfield. Thank you. Next is Alan D. Lilly. So I believe that the, the data, the metrics, is going to help drive us to our final results of what we choose to put in place for children, for students. We don't want to, I don't want to assume that I know everything. So look at the data, the metrics that's driven to us or provided to us by the state that can help us better assess what issues are, what issues lie at. The teachers, I, I feel the teachers are our front line and they can give us the most info we need. Just have, let them have a voice, a seat at the table, give them a voice. With their voice, we can know what's going on in classrooms, what their needs are, their wants are, what, what's going to hinder them from being the best they can be. Things like um, a mentorship program, as, as mentioned, and having, having, the, having the kids be, having the kids have a, a, a idea of what they want to do going forward in life, a path to success. Thank you all. Thank you. And last is Marquette Henderson Harris. Unmute yourself. All right. Okay, from the beginning. Okay, why don't you repeat the question? Okay. What programs and academic issues does Plainfield School District need to address or change? You know, uh, when we look at where our school system is, we know that we have struggled as a district. So it is so critical for us to get it right. So in order for us to do that, we really have to do an analysis and assessment of where we're at, what resources we need and where we need to go. So that's why this strategic plan is so critical to you know, us achieving the kinds of level of success that we want for our children. Um, we need to be able to involve the community. Who are we? You know, I mean, we need to know what it is that the community says that they need and what they feel the issues are and how those issues can be resolved. So we need to be solution focused and we need to uh, understand um, where we want to be as a school district and how we're gonna get there. So I think that strategic plan is critical to that process. Thank you. The next question, what is the best way to address differences of opinions among board members and between the board and administration? Victor Webb, we'll start with you. What is the, <clears throat> the best way to address differences? Yes. Quite honestly, to come to the table with no agendas and be honest about that. Um, you know, they're quite honestly, if there are differences in the board, a lot of times those those differences got there before anyone got to a seat at the table and people need to really loosen those agendas. If there's anybody in the community who has an idea who really wants to support the youth, they should be willing to work with anybody, whether they support them, whether they vote for them. Once elected, you need to put all your resources in the people that are there. And I think just having open, honest conversations and being reality based is the best way to go about it. Okay, thank you. Alan, Lily? Yes, the question again, please, the question, please. What is the best way to address differences of opinions among board members and between the board and the administration? Thank you. So I feel that if you go to a meeting and with the intent to understand and not to dictate or to, to bash or batter others for their opinion, that's a great way to start off a conversation to, to share or to, to collaborate on ideas and your passion for this, the children. We, we have to have, have respect for someone's opinion and understand why they think that way versus just bashing them. Get, I have an opinion that might be different from yours. That's okay. We have a common goal, which is the children. That's our goal is to, to better assist or best assist our children in our future. That's, that's my answer. 
Thank you. Sarah Virgo. Repeat the question one more time, please. What is the best way to address differences of opinions among board members and between the board and the administration? So I actually think that having a difference of opinion with such a large group as the Board of Education is actually helpful. It shouldn't be a board that is comprised of completely the same type of person politically aligned. Um, I don't think that's really effective for making change and moving forward and progressing. Um, I will say that for anyone who's attended our board meetings, they tend to be very political in nature and very confrontational in my opinion. So I think the best way to address some of those things is to elect people that can come in with a clean slate in terms of just being willing to change and being open to adapt to new and um, progressive ideas and taking politics out of it. The Board of Education should not be political, but it is at times. And so you really have to think about things in a way where there are differences of opinion, but if the goal is to really serve the children and to serve the teachers and staff and to make the district better, that should be the only focus. Thank you. Marquette Henderson Harris. I think that we all come to this process with um, our commitment to children to serve. And so I think that if we keep the focus on why we're there, uh, and if we have specific agendas, we know what our goals are. We know what our, if we do the strategic plan, we'll know what, what, what those goals that, that have been established. It, even a board should have its own goals. And if we keep the focus on goals and what we want in terms of outcome for children, I think that we can accomplish a lot. Thank you. Monique Joshua Cunningham. Can you repeat the question, please? What is the best way to address differences of opinions among board members and between the board and the administration? When we come together as a team, the focus should be on what it is, building a better education, a better city. And it's a wholeness. We think of it as a whole, the teachers, the the children, the future, where we are, where we need to go. And with this, we're gonna have a plan and a plan that we will follow, not only for where we are now, but also for the future. When the other board members come in, they can make amendments. But if we put a set plan in place, I know that it's not about us, it's not about me. It's really about the future generation of Plainfield. Thank you. Honey Wyatt. Yes, thank you for that question. I think that um, all of us, um, as we go into this as board members, we need to conduct ourselves as adults. We need to go into the meetings, um, able to agree to disagree. And just like Sarah said, we're all different and we should all be uh, moving toward the same goal. We're passionate about service and helping the youth and we're dedicating ourselves to this path to sit at a seat with eight other board members, nine including ourselves, and make decisions in the best interests of the district in its entirety. So I feel like when we do that, yes, of course, we need to leave politics out of it. We need to be able to effectively communicate and understand that when we're making these decisions, we're making them so that we can collectively do what's best for our students ultimately, because yes, they are our future and it makes a difference. We want to be a part of the change that we wish to see, so we have to conduct ourselves as such. So that is simply how I feel about it. Leave politics out of it, learn how to agree to disagree, and make decisions in the best interest of the district in its entirety. Thank you. The next question um, can be simply answered with a yes or no, but if you want to expand on it and use your full minute, feel free. Do you have any conflicts that will prevent you from voting on any issues while on the Board of Education? Marquette Henderson Harris. I do not. Okay, is that it or would you like to expand on that? That is it, I do not. Okay. That's fine. Victor Webb. Great question. I have to say that in my 20 plus years working and supporting 
the community. I think that you're going to have times where many people in the community want to serve the community. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. I don't want to um, begrudge anyone from joining the community and supporting it. It could be a teacher, however they want to serve the community the same way I do. I think there are, are checks and balances in place that allow you that if you have to abstain from voting or participation in something, that you follow those rules and you abide by them. I think asking questions like that can be divisive at times because these, these systems are put in place and it allows people to, to question um, your integrity. And that's not something that we need to do. So um, I, at this time, I don't think I have anything um, that I know about, but if it comes time or a, a, a reason for me to abstain or not participate, then I'll do such because that's what the, the system is put in place to, to monitor. Thank you. Hane Wyatt. Thank you for that. So do I have a conflict um, in a district where the Plainfield Board of Education is the biggest employer in the city of Plainfield, comprised of 1,500 employees. Yes, I do have a conflict. I have a relative that works in the district. However, that will not deter me from being an effective board member and making sure that I make decisions in the best interest of the district and how to move the district forward. I know how to conduct myself in a meeting with eight other members. I know how to be professional. I know how to keep politics out of it and make decisions that's gonna move the district forward and not necessarily move one or two people forward. We all know individuals who work for the district. Many of us may or may not have relatives that work in a district, but yes, I do have a conflict because I have relatives that work in the district, but that's not gonna stop me from doing what I need to do with regard to effectively being an effective board member, um, uh, make, trying to make lasting and effective change for the school district. I'm trying to be the change that I wish to see. Thank you. Alan, Lily. Great question, and thank you for that. So yes, I have relatives in, in the school system, and per the state law, 18A 12-24, I I'll have a, I cannot vote on any of these certain, certain specific things like superintendent or for relatives. I cannot vote, so I can be accountable for that. No problem at all. I'll make sure that I can still have a seat at the table and provide that our district goals and the focus on our strategic plans, things that will help us better our children for the future. That's why I'm here. So no problem at all. Yes, I have relatives in the system, worked it now, but I will not, I will not abuse my vote by breaking the law. I have no interest in that at all. What I teach the kids is what I buy by open and honesty. Okay, thank you. Sarah Virgo. Thank you. Uh, I do not have any conflicts, um, but I would just like to sort of echo the sentiments of everyone that's spoken thus far is in that Plainfield is a very small town compared to others and the likelihood that a member of a family will be employed by the city or by the Board of Education is probably pretty common. There are a lot of people that are employed um, by the district and by the city. Um, I don't personally have any any conflict, but I don't think that that should be a, a detriment to anyone that, that potentially does. Thank you. Thank you. Monique Joshua Cunningham. I do not. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Next question. What are the highest priority capital projects over the next three years, and how would they fit into the district's overall goals? Hane Wyatt, we're starting with you. The highest priority capital projects. You said, what are the, I'm sorry, can you please repeat yes. that? What, what are the highest priority capital projects over the next three years, and how would they fit into the district's overall goals? So the highest priority capital projects would be, um, I guess, number one, I would have to say the new school that's being built that is going to house um, our elementary school students. That is really a big deal. Um, I'm excited about that project. It's going to mean a lot for our elementary students with regard to the access that they have to different resources that are going to be within that building. I'm just hoping that we can spread those resources across the district. Um, I'm not a board member, so 
I can't really speak to everything that's going on specifically right now, but what I would like to see done is that we do uh, renovate a few of the schools that are older and need renovations. We don't necessarily have to build new ones, but we do need renovations because it, me it makes a difference in the climate and culture of where our students are learning. The learning environment makes a difference in how they learn and their um, excitement and enthusiasm for learning. Providing them with the resources will be the biggest thing that I would say we need to hone in on to make sure that we move our district forward and give our students the tools and our teachers and staff the tools that they need to succeed. Thank you. Sarah Virgo. Thank you. Um, I think priorities for capital projects need to be to address the population issues in our city. So we've seen a, a huge influx in students in the last couple of years. Um, I, I think it's great that we have the new school. I'd like to see that expanded upon. And just as Sine was saying, um, to sort of revitalize the schools that we have now to kind of, you know, renovate or just expand upon the um, perhaps the extracurriculars, the, the athletics, just to really make sure that we're providing all the resources in the current schools. Um, I think we also have to, like we talked about earlier, expanding some of the programs um, on a very large scale, so the vocational trade programs, um, perhaps financial literacy, just really making sure that those are incorporated, talented and gifted. Um, I think some of our programs that exist now, like dual enrollment, are fantastic, but we need to expand upon them. Um, and finally, and certainly not uh, in any order, um, I think that we need to do some work in the area of safety, specifically with COVID. I think we've done a great job of kind of adapting with our resources as we have them, but we need to do more to make sure that as things like this may happen again, perhaps that we're prepared for them effectively. Thank you. Marquette Henderson Harris. <clears throat> Since I'm not a board member yet, um, I don't really have enough information, but what I am aware of is that, um, that the new school that's going up, that is a lot of effort went into that. And, um, but I, I've spent time in the high school and uh, I live down the street from Hubbard. And I know that the high school, in my opinion, um, needs to, needs a lot, you know, we probably need a new high school, but I, I'm, you know, I'm not on the board, so I don't know what the priorities of the board are, are, but, you know, I agree that we've seen an increase in students just this year, you know, I understand that over 800 students registered, and so, you know, classrooms are crowded, are becoming crowded, I don't, I'm not really sure if, you know, we're able to maintain the social distancing that is required by you know by law and so we need to really look at that but we need to look at uh immediately you know how we can accommodate uh the increase in students that have come into the system thank you victor webb could you kindly repeat the question what are the highest priority capital <clears throat> projects over the next three years and how would they fit into the district's overall goals? Quite honestly, the superintendent should have that information. And if I'm lucky enough to be uh, elected along with my uh, running mates, we're going to work with her to ensure uh, that they are successful and, and, and come through. I think uh, it's a priority to work with the current city administration. Uh, they have a lot of connections with the county and state. I think it's important that they lobby those relationships to make sure that our schools are successful in achieving whatever capital projects we can uh, achieve that are on our table. It should be everyone's priority for Plainfield to have the same success across the board in the community. So whatever our superintendent needs, what she puts forward as, as her goals, I intend to support her 100% because her success should equal to the success of the students and faculty in the entire district. Thank you. Monique Joshua Cunningham. Because I am not on the board yet, but based on what I have researched and seen, the, um, our buildings, not that the focus is on the building, but our students need an environment that will be peaceful to them, attractive to them. All of these things help in lear learning and building your education. So one of the things I would like to see is for better build school buildings in Plainfield. 
when you enter the buildings, you have a, it's attractive. It's the setting is, you know, I'm here to learn. And that's one of the things I would like to see done in Plainfield. And um, our children, we set high standards for them and therefore have the resources, the things that they would need in order to go forth and become a better future, a better student, better woman, man in the future. Thank you. Alan, Lily. So oh, I think that we would really, could really use a strategic plan in place to spend our money wisely and efficiently. So we, we shouldn't, my opinion, we shouldn't just spend it willy nilly. No, we have to spend it on things that are of needs first, focus on the needs first, and then the wants if we have any afterwards. So having our, our schools and our, our establishments, established schools now repaired or upgraded is a great concept. But then as with the influx, the possible influx of over a thousand students, or close to a thousand students coming to our, our town, that's a concern as well. So we have to house those children somewhere. We're not sure which grades they're gonna be in, but they'll need a place to go to learn, to further their education. So I, I'm a strong supporter of putting a plan in place, a strategic, ooh, strategic plan in place to make sure that we have a, a focus of, a same vision focus on what the goals are going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next question. <clears throat> What is the key factor that sets you apart from the other five candidates? Monique, Joshua Cunningham, we're starting with you. Because of my passion for education, and I have been in the education system over 28 to 30 years, and I have seen the gaps. I have seen where our children are being left behind. And with that passion, I feel every child should have an equal education. Because of that, I am willing and ready to do whatever it takes, sit with the team and get this higher education moving. Thank you. Thank you. Marquette Henderson Harris. Well, I think that um, we all are equally qualified because we all are residents of this city and we all are committed to see it, you know, uh, and we all are committed to serving our, uh, the children of this town. But I think that um, I do have some experience because of my seasoned, I should say seasoned experience. Uh, and I've been involved in situations where uh, a system got transformed. So uh, when I was in New York and I worked for the child welfare system there, you know, when I first started, there were 50,000 kids in foster care. And by the time that I left, there were less than 10,000. So, you know, I understood what it took to make major changes to a system. Uh, and, and at different levels, you know, at the state level, at the county level, and at the uh, private voluntary level. So I think that I bring that perspective Thank to, uh, to this process. Thank you. Ellen, Lily? The question again, please. What is the key factor that sets you apart from the other five candidates? Born and raised in Plainfield, attended the Plainfield school system, was told that you can't make it, you won't make it, was discouraged many times, pushing through, having perseverance and having the chance to say, you know what? That can be me one, me one day. Relatable, I've been there, I've done those things. I am a product of playing field and I love it. I love every moment of it, but yeah, I'm relatable. I can help you walk that path of, when they say you can't do it, Look at me, I made it. You, you can't tell me you can't do it. You choose not to do it. Don't be, don't be your biggest burden. Be better than yourself. Be better than the next person. Be better than your parents. Strive for perfection. That's what I did, I made it. Thank you. Hane Wyatt. 
Thank you. So I can't say that there's one key factor. I'm going to say that aside from my passion um, and my dedication to serving my community and the youth um, in its entirety, that um, yes, I was raised here in Plainfield, gone through the public school system. I'm raising children here in the city of Plainfield who have also, or are also um, going to school within the Plainfield Public School District. I'm literally at some point in my day, every single day with the youth within a community. So I'm gonna like diligently work hard to make sure that the decisions that are being made, my decision and encouraging other members of the board to make the same decisions that are gonna move the district forward and that are in the best interest of the youth. Ultimately, by advocating for the administration, the staff and the teachers who we should gain more appreciation for after COVID, but by advocating for them to have the respect and resources that they need, I feel like ultimately we are definitely helping our students. By not doing so, we're doing them a great disservice. So again, I would just have to say that it's my passion and my drive and my dedication to the youth, my involvement in the community that sets Thank me aside. Thank you. Victor Webb. Key factor that separates myself from the others. I've been conducting myself by default as a board member for the last 20 years. I've been working and volunteering with the schools. I've worked in the classrooms. Anything community related, I've been an advocate for, whether I had the title or not. Um, my passion is there. I've, I've worked with the teachers. Um, I've, like Alan said, I actually did come up in the Plainfield Public School System, still have relationships with the teachers to this day. They know me, they see me. I'm around the schools. I'm hoping that they are our, our, our biggest advocates to possibly be on the board because they know that I've done the work um, selflessly um, for any for no other reason other than I want to put Plainfield first in anything and everything that I do. And I hold people starchly accountable. Um, and there's no selfish agenda at all. So, um, and not just myself, but my two running mates, I think are highly and equally as, 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 as um, qualified for this position as well. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Virgo. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned in my intro, I've been at MSK CCA for the last 15 years. And a large part of my role there is to really communicate with others who are incredibly dependent on clear and concise information. And I think that's something that's really lacking here in Plainfield is really effective communication um, for all stakeholder, stakeholders, regardless of language, income status, family dynamics, and so on. Um, so in addition to that, just overseeing large operations, identifying funding, and taking a pragmatic approach to that funding, um, advocating for the, for the youth, willing to you know, work across the aisle, so to speak, um, and really being dedicated to change, as Vic and Hene were saying, um, we're willing to do the work, we've been doing the work, we're very dedicated to our community, and we're not here for titles or to simply win the election, we're here to really make a difference in the community and really put forth real change. Thank you. Thank you. This is the last question before we get to the closing statements. Last question is, how do you plan to ensure that Plainfield students are prepared for college? Alan Lilly. You're first. Thank you. So that's a great question. I, I, I really know this question. Having a plan in place, not a pipeline in place to have the kids go from kindergarten to high school and that's it. No, let's work together and put this plan in place. A plan where we all see, we can visualize it, see it, talk to it, work to it. That's what we plan to do, our team come, come to, to have a strategic plan put in place, we can all see it and have the kids work well with the teachers and the superintendents buy-in and have us all work this plan, a common plan to have our kids succeed. That's our common goal is to make sure our kids in Plainfield have a chance to succeed on a world platform, not just locally, nationally, global, why not? Look at, just give them a chance. That's our goal, give them a chance, give them, a fighting chance to succeed in life. Thank you. Marquette Henderson Harris. So we have a perfect example of that right now in the Plainfield School District, and that's PAWS. PAWS is recognized nationally and in New Jersey as one of the top ranked student uh, schools, especially in terms of the number of youngsters, and actually I read that it's like 
a minority, but over 69% of the students attend college. So, I mean, we need to be able to replicate pods. And it, last night, I also observed the um, rollout of the new curriculum that they're piloting, a symposium for uh, 12, I think it's K to K to five. And so things like that, I think, will go a long way in preparing our children and uh, to making that next step to move on to college and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Monique Joshua Cunningham. Can you repeat the question, please? The question is, how do you plan to ensure that Plainfield students are prepared for college? Figuring out the gap, there is a gap between preschool, elementary. When that gap is filled, this can push our children forward for a better education. There is a gap and that gap needs to be filled. Once that gap, we recognize what that gap is, we put a systematic plan in place and we can move forward from there. But the important thing is to fill the gap. There's a gap that needs to be bridged. And when the children go forward and ready for college, they're not able to, they start out with all this, um, they have to take remedial classes and it's because of that gap that need to be bridged. Thank you. Thank Sarah you. Sarah Virgo, Virgo, sorry. Thank you. Um, I spoke about it before and it's actually one of our platform points for column one. We have to establish these guaranteed pathways uh, very early on and make sure that we're providing support to our students to achieve those outcomes. I will also say that as much as I went to college, I loved college, I wanted to go to college from the moment I entered school, my sister did not. She was never interested in college, but we are both, she went on to become an entrepreneur, we're both very successful and we're very happy. So I think that we need to also start thinking of the narrative, especially in Plainfield, where we're seeing that not a lot of students are pursuing college, and that's fine. Um, if anything, COVID has taught us that essential workers and vocational trades are just as important as college. So I think we need to do some work to establish some, um, some better results for the proficiencies in Plainfield. I think our reading is at you know, it's, uh, maybe 25%, math is at 17 compared to the rest of the state. That has to change, and we have to make sure that we're offering support whether it be financial literacy to make sure that we're not taking out a tremendous amount of loans to pay for college, if that's not something that we're serious about um, and really preparing students for whatever path they'd like to take, making sure we support them. Thank you. Thank you. Anne Wyatt. Thank you. Um, I just like to say um, inclusion and uh, resources. We need to get back to the drawing board, try to figure out what resources are needed to help our teachers and um, further help our students so that they can succeed. Providing programs that our students are interested in, implementing them and making sure that they're successful at them. Making sure that we understand the dynamic between being able to cope with whatever's going on in life, having those therapists in place, our social workers, meeting the students where they are and making sure that they're able to succeed and work through it because that's a, big, I, that's a big deal right now coming off of COVID back into the school year and trying to make sure that our children are moving forward because they were set back a little bit by the virtual schooling. So I just wanna say that including the students, the students, I'm gonna keep saying the students, but not only the students, but the teachers in our decision-making process to make sure that they're providing us with adequate information so that we can make the best informed decisions to move our district forward. They need more resources, they need, the respect that they deserve and they need our support. And that's gonna be key in moving the district forward and making sure that Plainfield gets back to where it needs to be. Thank you. Victor Webb. Can you kindly repeat the question? Sure. How do you plan to ensure that Plainfield students are prepared for college? Yeah, I'd like to work with the current administration and make sure that all core curriculum classes are, are taken uh, for those students who are interested in attending college. Uh, sometimes those courses, uh, they're pre-college courses that can start in middle school prior to even high school. Um, there are programs where you can make a partnership with Kenyon, Kenyon University, Union County College, um, or other colleges in the area that will accept uh, students uh, early uh, to stay on that path. 
But like Sarah said, um, making sure that students are financially literate. No one wants to go to college and, and have, you know, have to go into debt uh, to further their education. Everyone's not going to get a scholarship, but we want to make sure that on the high school level that you're taking the classes you need. You're making sure that you take all the Englishes, the maths, all the, the, the requirements that the guidance counselors should be making students aware of. And then once you have that in place, then as a board, we can look into other options. Like I said, if Union County College or Kane University has has a program that can accept Plainfield students early, then that could be a guaranteed path to success in some ways if they choose it. Thank you. We will now have the candidates' closing statements, beginning with Hane Wyatt. Thank you. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters again for having us on this platform to share our views and perspectives as it relates to our candidacy for um, candidates for the Plainfield Board of Education. I'd like to again just announce that I am with column one, the Empowerment Through Education team with Sarah Virgo and Victor Webb. And we are asking for your support to vote us in column one to be your next board members and representatives. I um, just wanna speak to our passion and our dedication and our diligence in trying to be involved in the decision-making process. We're looking to be the change that we wish to see. And we're gonna stop at nothing to continue to advocate for our youth whether it be as board members or as community leaders and activists. This is what we do day in and day out every single day. We will continue to do so. We're just hoping that you support us so that we can actually have a seat at the table and do it in a more broad perspective. So my name is Hane Wyatt. I'm with the Empowerment Through Education team. We are in column one, Wyatt, Webb, and Virgo. Thank you. And I wish you guys have a good evening. Thank you. Victor Webb. Yes, thank you uh, for this opportunity to speak to the voters in Plainfield and anyone watching this. Um, like I said, our commitment has been going on for decades uh, to the city of Plainfield, to the youth, uh, to the school system. And I would just like this opportunity to you know, have a seat at the table. Uh, I think being a school board member is a very uh, high responsibility. It's something that I don't take lightly. I like to support the faculty in being successful in supporting our youth and, and raising the next generation. And I am asking for your support along with Sarah Virgo and Hane Wyatt on November 2nd to vote for the Empowerment for Education platform. Thank you very much. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. Sarah Virgo. Yeah, thank you once again for the opportunity to be here this evening. I hope that we've offered some additional insight into who we are and what we value. Um, I think my background in, into, in operations and communications allows me to render fiscally responsible decisions, promote effective communication, and offer achievable solutions to the issues that are facing our students. Um, and my experience with nonprofits and educational organizations allows me to work collaboratively and effectively with all groups. Um, my equally important role as an involved Plainfield parent provides me with the opportunity to support and empower students from the perspective of a mom with two school age children. Um, I'd just like to add, whether those of you watching have children or not, the strength of the school district should matter to everyone here in Plainfield. Cities can really thrive with a strong school system and they can really suffer without one. So I think it's time for us to collectively put politics aside and really focus on what we can do to make the next generation of Plainfield better. Um, I hope that my running mates and I have earned your vote for this evening for column one. And if given the opportunity uh, to serve on the Plainfield Board of Education, I hope that the people of Plainfield will hold us accountable to the promises that we've made to you this evening. Um, if you believe that the Plainfield Board of Education needs members who can analyze the issues, create effective solutions, lobby for the essentials that our students and teachers deserve, and to have a proven record of leadership success. We need you to vote on or before November 2nd. Um, I encourage all voters to continue to do their research on each of the candidates and take full advantage of the many ways in which you may cast your vote. I look forward to continuing to meet with all of you and for the opportunity to serve you. And I thank you for tuning in this evening and doing what you doing your part to really make a difference in our city. Vote column one, Honey Wyatt, Victor Webb, and Sarah Virgo, Empowerment for Education. Thank you once again for your time. Ellen Lilly. Uh, I'm saying thank you for the legal and voters. Thank you for the stakeholders, taxpayers, residents of Plainfield City, which I am as well one of those folks. We look forward to everyone casting their vote, but 
when you go to vote, keep in mind, we all have a common interest, which is the children. Our goal is to make sure children have a pathway to success. Starting off, sorry, my clock is going off. Starting off with from pre-K to 12th grade senior and beyond. So we're advocates for education. We're advocates for success. We look forward to you all coming out to vote column two, Lily, Harris, and Cunningham. Thank you for your time and a pleasure for being here. A pleasure. Monique Joshua Cunningham. First, I would like to apologize to my teammates. I would like to make a correction with that name. It is Lily Harris and Cunningham. Again, thank you, Leagues of Women, Voters of Plainfield, for hosting this much needed annual forum. I have learned much listening into this forum tonight. I am most appreciative that the League of Women Voters Candidates Forum has allowed my voice to be heard. I felt that it was very important for me mm -hmm. as a candidate to voice my responses. I hope that I have been able to share with the city of Plainfield stakeholders who I am. I respectfully ask for your vote in column two, aiming higher, mm -hmm. For a, aiming higher together, Alan, Lily, Market Harris, and myself, Monique Cunningham. Thank you. Marquette Henderson Harris. While campaigning, I've had the opportunity to listen to many residents. There is a recognized urgency for a paradigm shift in our district's approach to education that provides each student with an academic experience that will allow them to achieve their full potential. We are responsible for preparing our children to successfully compete and to pursue their own interests and their own career choices. I mentioned the success of PAS, and I also see that there are things that are already starting to happen here in Plainfield with the development of the new curriculum. So, you know, I am very encouraged, but there is so much at stake here. Yeah, there is so much at stake. And for years, we have seen a decline in the system. And so we need to be able to transform this system to meet the needs of our kids. So given that, I urge you to vote column two, Monique Cunningham, Alan Lilly, and Marquette Harris. We are aiming higher together. And I'd like to remind you that on October 23rd, early voting starts. And I also would like to, again, thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum. Thank you very much and good evening. I'd like to thank the candidates for their participation today for deciding to serve the Plainfield community. Thanks to those members of the community who submitted questions. This is how we make democracy work. I hope you found the, this event an informative one. Thank you. And now to our media sponsor. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Popper. For those that don't know, I am the editor of Tap Into Plainfield, um, where we report on the news, all things Plainfield, Union County, et cetera, all your local news. <clears throat> I'd first like to say that I'm proud to have partnered with the League of Women Voters to uh, sponsor this um, candidate forum. It's very important. And we'll have a recap of everything that took place, and you can find it at tapintoplainfield.net. Thank you. This forum will be trans transcribed and published by our, our Spanish, published in Spanish by our other media sponsor, Reporte Hispano. 
Hello, my name is Rita Davis, and I'm the VP of Voter Services of the Legal Women Voters of Plainfield. I hope you found this forum informative for your Board of Education voting selections next month. For those that were unable to watch live tonight, encourage your Plainfield friends and family to watch a recording of this forum on 411.org, the Plainfield Legal Women Voters YouTube channel, and on our Facebook page, Legal Women Voters of Plainfield Area, New Jersey. The Legal Women Voters welcomes men and women. If, we are, if you are interested in our local organization, comment on our Facebook page or send an email to lwvnjplainfield at gmail.com. Regarding voting for this election, registered voters can apply for a vote by, ma vote by mail ballot by following the instructions found at vote dot nj dot gov or contacting the union county clerk at uncnj dot org. In person early voting is a new option that enables all registered voters to cast their ballots in person using a voting machine during a nine day period prior to election day, November 2nd. Union County has seven in person early voting locations that will be open Saturday, October 23rd through Sunday, October 31st. Hours, hours will be Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. No appointment is needed. Or you can vote in person at your polling place from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on election day, November 2nd. Thank you for joining us. Good night.